Oh, there we go. Okay. Now we're officially live with the recording. Um, I guess if you're watching the recording, we're just opening up again to getting through the example sample questions or the questions they have. Uh, just to get to the screen. All right, Gabe, Kevin, any any progress? Any response? You need more time? Is something wrong with this question bar? Can you hear me? You can hear me. Good. Okay. How's your how's your Unity? Um, did you have Unity up and running? All set up? Good. Gabe? How you doing? All right, uh, that's all right, Gabe. Uh, how are you doing? Do you have, are you up to this uh, new project page? You're still loading Unity. But we're going to go ahead and click uh, New Project. Then we'll go, you can name it whatever you like. I called it my first Unity project. You can call it Hello World. It's a classic. Save it wherever you like. The default's pretty good. And click Create. Uh, I've already done this, so I'm going to go back. Open my project that I opened. We started. So, Can you, do you see, do you all get a screen like this? Yep, okay. Uh, Gabe, if you can't hear me, it sounds like you can't, uh, I'll, I'll send some, a message in chat to you. the uh, your mic's broken, um, but we'll make it work. Okay, let me get my screen back. Organized again. Okay, you guys can see, oh, not what I want to show you. You guys can see my screen now. Okay, so uh, start a new project, and um, we want to click. Uh, so um, just let me know if this is too basic for you, but uh, I want to cover um, just kind of how to move around. Um, starting off up here with the hand, you can click, and this moves you up and down, left and right. Um, and a little bit forwards and back, but not much. Um, then 
if you right click, you get this eyeball, and when you move when you move around, uh, yeah, and then you move around, you should end up like this. Uh, you can, I mean, you can change the angle and continue to see. Now, if you click on this, uh, this plus here, you can start. That lets you touch objects. Um, so let's start off with the light. Um, let's see, we can move it in this direction, this direction, or this direction. Um, you can also pick it up and just move it around as you like. Um, and then if you rotate it, just pick a direction to rotate it in. You can see this light is pretty important. Um, and then if you click over here in the game mode, this is what you'll actually see in the game. See nothing. Let's go back to scene and give ourselves some light. Go to the game and we see our world. Okay, so let's add something. Go into create. Uh, let's add a cube or whatever you want. I'll do a cube. All right. Uh, I want to make it bigger. I'm going to make the scale of three. Oops. Three. All right. And I'm still on rotate. So rather than using my, my mouse, I'm going to go over here and click 45. 45. 45. And I can rotate my cube here. Also, I can transform. Say I want to go to zero, zero, zero. Did that right here in the position. So you can make it mathematical, or you can make it. Uh, oops, this is the view. This is I'm gonna go here. Ah. Or you can just drag things around. Uh, I want to put these back at zero, zero. Just for uh, sake of easy. Okay, and then we go back to game, and hey, we see our cube. All right, so that's the basics, m most basic uh, things you can do. I'm gonna go back here and show you what this cube looks like as it gets dark. You can see, it really does start to disappear. Look at that. See? Alright, so we want some light. Um, this will also change our angle. So if I move this cube uh, if I move this over here uh, I'm still working. over here. You can see that oh, I was trying to put a shadow on it. Uh, I did the wrong direction. Let's see. I can rotate this around. Um, I'm still getting the hang of this sometimes, but move this over here. And then we click this, this guy over here, grab the cube over here, and go back to the game. Uh, okay, let's see if I can put this back into the line of sight. Oh, uh, I lost it. All right, so um, I've kind of just been messing around with dragging and dropping, but we're going to um, – it's a lot easier to use these, these transform, these position things here. 
especially once you if you want to like drag and drop and get it close and then uh, make it you know kind of snap into place with position. So uh, I think you see what you can do here with these kind of pieces. Um, it's good to it's, it's fun to explore you know what other kinds of shapes you can get. Whoops, that was a cube again. Uh, I meant to create a sphere. that we can distinguish. We'll see if this, uh, yeah, so now we can see some shading because our, we've moved the light around. Um, so that's all I was going for there. Um, but now I want to, oh yeah, okay. Um, and an important thing to note is that, so all of these, these objects that we've been playing around with, they're called game objects. Uh, let me see. Which around to here. All right. So if you've gotten set up. Um, oh, I didn't mention this. Uh, probably should have. Um, you're going to want to load certain assets um, into your uh, first set game setup. Um, mainly cameras, characters, cross-platform input, input, effects, environment and utility. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just post that in the chat bar here so I can move on um, and you can uh, go ahead and add those if you like. Um, cameras. If you, if you didn't do that in the first place or didn't just check out all of them, then uh, you can always just create a new one, but um, we're going to actually jump into some example projects in a sec, so don't worry about it if you didn't. Uh, these are just the, the key ones. Okay, I just sent those in the chat. Um, Alright, so I can move on now. Um, Yep, so that was a setup. Uh, oh, it's also useful to change your uh, your layout to default. I didn't mention that before either. Um, but if we go back into the application here, we can go into layout, click default. Um, that gives us a, uh, a good, uh, well, you can see what happens when you, when you change things up. If you do two by three, you can, the, the default's good. Um, so if you want to change it around, by all means, go right ahead. Um, pick the one you like best, but uh, I'll be sticking with the default. All right. If there's no difference in them other than, like, they don't have one. You can use all the tools from all of them. They just or arrange them in different ways. All right, so... The first thing we, we want to do now that we've created some pieces is to save uh, our scene. It would, that's what we've created here. So we want to go in back to Unity and click File, Save Scene, or Save Scene As if you wanted to, you know, you already saved it. Um, I'm going to write over my old scenes one. Um, you can just save it as scene one. Yep. Okay, and now uh, when we close out, we'll be able to get back into here. If you just closed it from here, it might prompt you to save, but if you didn't save, you'd lose your work. So um, always save. It's always a good idea. You never know if you want to come back or not. All right, back to slides. Um, yeah, and there's a, an important note down here. Uh, when you, as you're building this scene, think of it as a level um, or... And, and not even like, you know, uh, if, you, if you're familiar with Skyrim, uh, a good example is the entire world as is one level. Um, but your house and all of the shops and things, those are different levels. Um, if you're used to playing uh, Mario, then, you know, every stage is another level. Um, or maybe a, a boss battle will be another level because it's usually in a different place, unless the boss battle can, is in the same level, and then it's not. So um, it's really like each 
seen is um, you know, one uh, instance of a location that you build. And you could duplicate scenes if you want to make them change. Maybe you return to a level that things have changed. You want you can you might want to duplicate it, a scene. So uh, scene one and scene two might have very similar similar things, but you might change some pieces around um, uh, and that sort of thing. So uh, that's but that's how how to think about the scenes. Um, uh, we went through the the layout. There is a game preview that I didn't point out. Um, if we go back, um, let's see, uh, let's see, I had it up before, I can't remember how to get that back. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, you want to click on the camera here. Uh, if you click on the main camera, that's the game preview. So that's what I should have used earlier when I was struggling to get things in the right line of sight. Now, um, when I click to drag things around, oops, um, I lose my game preview, but I can click back and quickly see. Now, another thing you can do that is particularly useful is to click See, now this is in game mode. This is where you'll start. This is the scene, the, the, the editor. So if you click on game mode, uh, let's see, if, you, if you click and drag, um, you can put this game you know, over here. And then game and scene are side by side. And that's really useful. You can also change, change this up. Um, you can also move the starting point in the camera. Uh, so, for example, you know, there's my starting scene, right? So this way you can do both at the same time. And if you if you want it to go back, you just uh, drag it around. Just be careful because it just goes all over the place. Um, kind of just pops around, but you get the hang of it pretty quickly. Okay. Now we'll go back. Um, and pretty much every piece of the screen can can do that. Um, yep, talked about that. We talked about the few controls. Um, so game objects, that's what these are called. This camera is a game object, this uh, light is a game object, and the cube is a game object, and every other thing you find in this, uh, this list here. Now if I go back to Unity, um, if we create, if we can create it, it's a game object, um, including these empty, empty child, that, that sort of thing. Um, we can also go into here, game object. We get the same options. Um, sometimes we might get more. Let's see. No, you you get all of them. Yep. So um, so these are really useful, um, but. Game objects are are like the I want to say the most basic piece, but they each piece can still have properties. So the actual like most basic piece would be a property of a game object, but the 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 most fundamental concept uh, in Unity is is that of the game object, um, and so. It, uh, as this says, everything in the game is a game object. The player, the background, the power-ups, and the music, they're all game objects. Um, so that said, it's not the smallest part. Um, the game object is the sum of its components. So, for example, if the game object were a cube, then uh, it would have a location in the game. It would have, like, XYZ, it would have uh, XYZ rotations. Um, and... Uh, it might have some transform applied to it. Also, it might have certain properties like uh, it's static, it can't move, or maybe it's dynamic, it uh, is affected by gravity, that sort of thing. Uh, so this inspector window here 
uh, gives shows you all of the properties of that object. Um, so it says don't click anything yet. If you want to play around, just by all means go play around. Um, that's the best way to learn. Um, but if you break something, just be sure you have a save point you can go back to. Um, or Control-Z is your friend as well. So uh, you can add, delete, and manipulate components on this inspector window here. Um, and I already showed you how it was used with uh, you know the block, zipping, moving the block under position and that sort of thing. If your game object were something like music, then your component, one component of that uh, might be the, the file itself. Um, and then another component would could be the volume, um, and you might have other other things you'd like to change about the music as well as uh, maybe some uh, some triggers that trigger the music. Though those would probably be on a different object. All right. So uh, we talked about transformations numerically. Uh, it's pretty powerful. Um, and with the hand. All right. Um, oh, you also can hit uh, reset. I didn't point that out either. So if you go back here and you click on this cube, see I rotated it? I can go here. Oh, whoops. Nope. Oh, where's that button? Here. Transform. And hit reset. Or you can reset individual things. Maybe I want to reset the scale. And it'll go back to tiny scale. Or maybe I don't like that, and I'll control Z. Uh, maybe that doesn't work. Okay, you probably maybe you can't control Z uh, a reset. Um, so just be sure you want to do that before you do it. But you can always make like if I wanted to make it big, I could just three. There we go. It's big again. Okay. So. Uh, we went over rotation um, and how to rotate. You can use the hand. I didn't cover so much the hand. Um, well, I guess I, I did a little bit. But uh, if you can gr get your mind around the angles, uh, it actually a, tends to be a lot easier to rotate, um, again, with this, this transform uh, component here. Um, but both, you know, some... Give it a shot in both ways, and uh, you might find it. You can also scale an object using this tool. I never, I didn't show you that, but I'll let you figure that out. It's just like the others. Um, you can also reset on all of those things. Um, let's see. So uh, I showed you how to manipulate the directional light already. Um, so you can, uh, you'll see the shadows. I took you through these examples already, um, and yeah, like this note points out, this is what your players will see. This is so that you can still uh, kind of actually manipulate things while it's dark, but this is what your players will see. So uh, just always be mindful of that. All right, so that's uh, the end of our slides, but not the end of our lesson. So um, that was a quick introduction. So now what we want to do, now that you've saved, um, is go to Open Project here. All right. And instead of your own project, we're, we're going to open the Standard Assets Example Project. Um, yeah, sure, I'll save. This might take a little bit because there's a lot of files to load. Um, Was I paused the whole time? Could you guys see my screen during the PowerPoint, or was I paused? You can see it? Oh, good. Okay. Maybe it just paused itself. I it Okay. I was getting worried for a second. 
Okay, so um, uh, it starts off looking like there's not that much here, but you'll notice down here in the assets, um, we've got a couple of files here, and there's quite a bit in these files. So let's do a little exploring around and see how uh, the Unity developers chose to arrange their assets. Now, I haven't really talked about assets yet, but assets are um, files. They're just, uh, if you go into here in the assets, you can create assets. Um, you can create them in different languages, C Sharp, JavaScript, shaders, um, audio mixers, lens flare, all kinds of things are pre-built into here. Um, you, uh, but, but each one of these is going to create its own um, file, uh, including sound and uh, volume. Those are, I mean, not volume. Sound, sounds are assets that you would add as a component. You know, you would link that uh, to your uh, sound object if you want to create audio, your audio object, audio source. For example, we could click here and we'd see uh, audio clip here. So if you, um, here's some audio clips that have been built in. Um, they've included, so you know, you could pick some of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and delete that because I don't want it. Um, and so what's happened here is we, we haven't loaded any scenes yet. So let's go ahead and now that we're here, let's open a scene. Um, but I was just talking about assets. So let's explore. Let's see what, what they've got. Um, vehicles, particle systems, environment, cross-platform input. That sounds complicated. Characters, cool. All right, let's check out characters. We've got a first-person character. Physical material, rollerball, third-person character. Let's see what the third person looks like. Oh, now we have another couple of folders. All right, models maybe? Oh, nothing's in here. Okay. Animation? Nope. Oh, uh, it might be looking for a certain type of file. So let's go back out. Uh, back to the standard assets. Nope. Not even assets. Okay, sample scenes. This is what it, it's... I was trying to load a scene, so it's probably only going to show me scenes. So let's go into inside sample scenes. Let's go into scenes. All right. Great, Gabe. Um, so, as you might guess, these are all the scenes built into the sample system. So um, just for fun, let's... Uh, Start start off with just the car. This one's, uh, or no, no. Let's go with the the character third person. How about that? One? All right. Uh, I'm not gonna say if I don't want to overwrite their stuff. Okay. So this is a world created by developers. Let's go take a look at the scene for a sec, just to see what kind of world we're getting ourselves into. If I pull my right click button and move around, we can see what this world looks like. Okay, we've got some some cubes in here. Looks like, oh, there's where our scene starts. You can see the camera and the person. And looks like we've got a bit of a maze. What's this up here? All right, so let's go back to the game and click play. Let's do a little exploring here. So if I use my mouse, it looks like I can kind of change the angle a little bit. All right, what if I try some keyboard buttons like the up arrow? Oh, look at that. Start moving around. So if I hold it. Oh, I can press more than one at a time. And it looks like Blocks are getting in the way, but, oh, let's see, okay. Uh, not sure this is, one of you guys might be able to figure out how to change the screen angle more than what I have, but 
so far. I haven't figured that out yet because I haven't explored around. So, um, so what? what is, oh yeah, um, let's try something else too. Let's hit the space bar. Oops, didn't hit it in time. Okay, space bar. Look at that. We can jump. Okay. Um, so this is pretty complex. Um, this just designing, just getting all all of this built and designing design would take quite a bit of effort. Just designing this person would take a lot of effort. So let's uh, let's explore what went into this. Um, you can see there's a lot of components in here, and these components are actually classed um, in folders. Gabe says, or I could use Blender. What is Blender, Gabe? Oh, is that a map maker? A program for Unity? Okay. To design characters. Yes. So, um, that's, that's actually just where I was going. So, you know, designing this character yourself would be really complicated. Um, but people, I've, like... People have to design characters all the time. So, um, using tools like Blender or built-in characters also, um, you can create your own characters and the, the physics and the components are, are built in, uh, hard-coded in, or, you know, done behind the scenes for you, which is, which is awesome. So, let's see how we're being controlled how this is so let's click on third person controller because that sounds like uh, controlling uh, you know, we might be able to control something uh, with that we and what we're doing here is looking over at the inspector kind of seeing what components there are we can see this is really complex um, not something we necessarily want to be messing with too much um, these down down to the toes, left toe one and two. So this is pretty complicated. Um, like we said, you you can use tools to build your own main character. Uh, so let's uh, maybe go somewhere else. UI user interface. That sounds like it also could be controls. Um, so let's try clicking on it. Let's see. Nope. Uh, we got a little, a few more inspector tools over here. Um, we've got something called Canvas, the Raycaster, which is a script, and uh, mobile control rig, but still nothing that looks like the, our keyboard keys. So this looks promising. How about the Move Touchpad? Okay, so again, we've got a uh, touchpad script, but no luck there. Let's see. Let's actually go into the text. Um, oh, and maybe we do actually want this. Um, so the source image is the touchpad sprite, um, and the script is touchpad. Now, if we want, we can open up this script and see what it, what it's actually doing. Um, and if you look here, you can see as we were going through the assets, uh, this is in the cross-platform input. Um, we're trying to kind of explore how this guy moves around. So... Uh, we're, uh, I mean, it makes sense for, for the input to be in, uh, something labeled maybe cross-platform input. All right, so, uh, if we want to scroll through here, uh, we can see that it's kind of hard to read, so let's make it bigger. All right, now this is easier to read. So, oops. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Is, uh... Is that Mr. Dubik here? All right, we'll just keep going. All right, so uh, 
you can see here how we're, we can explore into and really get our get, figure out what uh, what this code is doing. Um, and if you don't understand it, I mean, I don't understand this right now. Um, you know, that's not a problem. Uh, but you know, it's it's good to be able to to you know jump into the code really quickly if you like um, and try to figure out how this stuff works. Um, and then we can get right back out of it just by clicking back over here. Um, turn and look touchpad. Uh, that has uh, looks like it has the same uh, script involved and jump here as well. So I wanted to specifically focus on jump because I know that we can change those numbers mid um, I'm going to double click on this script here. We can change the jumps numbers so the, how high you jumps mid jump or, you know, while we're playing here. Um, but it takes some playing around with. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll look up this for next time. Um, I thought this would be a little easier, but it doesn't seem to be loading on my computer right now. So uh, so that's, that's user interface. Um, often that might come with the person builder um, with uh, something like Blender. So uh, you don't necessarily need to know that. I'm going to jump back out of the game mode in the scene and look at some of this uh, geometry here. So if I click and grab, let's see what, um, let's see there's a coin. Um, let's see what this, this coin is. Well, I know we can go in here. Okay. Um, so this pickup, there we go. So ge in geometry dynamic pickup, um, you can see uh, this has some properties here. Um, it's got the, the basics that you know about, position, rotation, scale. Um, but then if you go, if you look a little further, it's got some additional properties uh, down here that we, we aren't, necessarily used to with something like the, our boxes. Um, these boxes, they, uh, you know, also have more than the, than the basics, um, but uh, the basic cube, that is. Uh, but see, this pickup here has um, what's called a, a pickup prototype. Uh, so that, you know, this is a special type of uh, component that uh, you know, just basically tells it, uh, again, I'm not sure that this file is going to be able to open. Uh, no, it doesn't like it. Okay. Um, but it allows it to be picked up. Um, and then it would be, uh, you know, some code would run and maybe your tally of coins would go up by one. That sort of thing. Um. Oh, I just clicked on the ground this time, and it worked. It gave, so it took me straight to the ground obstacle, which uh, will help you, help you from falling through the grounds, um, giving you ground lines and that sort of thing. Um, so let's go back to that box, because that seems pretty interesting, and I'll uh, try to find it. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay. Whoops. Sorry, I hope this doesn't make me too dizzy. Making me dizzy. Okay. So this box here, we ran into it, right? And it moved. So um, there's, a, there's a couple of things that give it these properties. Um, 
and those things would be the components. So uh, we start off with uh, you know the ba the most basic component, the transform, and then we've got this cube mesh filter that uh, kind of helps describe the cube. Um, but then we also have this uh, what's called a collider here, um, which is a special uh, property that lets um, you know, tells what or, you know helps control what happens when um, when something collides with it. Um, it, it kind of gives it its property. And uh, let's see, what does it say here? Non physics. Um, and uh, you know, here's another property, rigid body, that helps describe uh, the mass, uh, angular drag, used gravity. So look at this. If we if we didn't if we uncheck this box right now, this is a good one, good example. All right. Now this particular one, I want to restart. The Okay. So remember, I'm going to go back into this game, hit play, and come up here. Now remember, it's not it's not behaving, you know, not responding to gravity. Let's see what happens if I move it. Oh, it still it still responded to gravity. Um. I guess there's one possibility that that was a different box. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay. Pause it. All right. Hit play. And now let's click on this box here. After we hit play, now let's turn gravity off. Okay. So mid game, or while we're playing, we turn gravity off. This is back onto the screen. All right, now let's run into the box and see what happens. Whoa, look at that. Flying off into space. There's these boxes. They stay right there. So what, what we did was basically turn off the, you know, you know, you saw it still rotating, it moved, it still collided. That's because we had these colliders attached, but we basically turned off the, the gravity engine, uh, just that one component. Uh, if we click this use gravity again, look at that. Do you see it fall from the sky? Um, if you didn't, well, you're going to have to watch the YouTube video because that's going to take a while to do again. Um, but, uh, oh, actually, you know what? I guess I run off to it. I wonder if it will just start taking off into the air if I just run into it. Okay, let's see. This is this is this is the best way to like kind of get started with Unity is to see what other people have done. Oh, now I'm not even going to be able to catch up to it. Look at that. So see what other people have done and try to emulate it. Oh, there we go. Now we've left this world where we hit a, a ridge or something. I don't know what that white thing was. Um, now it's really going off to the space. But we can bring it back, right? Now look, keep an eye on it. Keep an eye on it. And there it goes. It fell down. So um, uh, I encourage you to check out some other projects. Um, I'll give you some... Uh, Oops, not in open projects, sorry, not other projects, other scenes. They're fairly different from this one. Um, if we click on open scene, you can go into sample scenes, scenes, um, and you can see by the names here, there's a 2D character. There's um, some aircraft, jets, and propellers. Um, there's a car that you can drive around, um, particles and rollerball. So really explore these and... Uh, whenever you get curious about something, just try to try to dive into the properties and see what, um, try to figure out what these components mean. Um, it, it won't always be clear, but try to just see 
look for things that you can understand. Um, and that's really just, like, that's all the goal is for now, is just to really explore what, what types of things you can do. Um, and don't forget that if you want to see what something, you want to test something out, and, you know, like, like I just did here, you know, clicking, you can turn gravity on and off just with a flick. Um, and that, that's true of all the code and everything that is running. Um, as far as I'm aware of, I don't think, I'm pretty sure you can change everything, um, and it just changes on the fly while you're, while you're playing here. So, uh, but it's important to note that keep an eye on this gravity thing. I just unchecked it again to make sure that gravity is off. When I return, all those changes are undone. So this is a really awesome way to explore without risking, uh, you know, crazy changes to your, uh, to your code. And then if you, when you like something, a tweak, uh, you know, you remember the number that you want, that kind of thing, and then you know, make sure you make that change again. So, uh, yeah, do some exploring. Uh, with that said, I'm going to go uh, back here to... had a video loaded. Oh, that's right. Okay. Um, oh, Gabe, yeah. Uh, Gabe just sent, said, a uh, friend just sent him an article that says the universe may be a hologram. Yeah, we could actually be living in a 2D world, and the what we feel as gravity can... can uh, make us see it and feel like it's actually in 3D. And the, the, we, the weirdest part is that it is apparently theoretically possible, and we might never know. Um, that's a, uh, yeah, it's a mind bender. So um, I'm going to switch gears for a quick second, um, and... Uh, I think, where is it? Here it is. Okay. So, um, this guy has some advice on um, game development. And after he talks, I wanted to leave myself an extra couple of minutes because some of what he says is a little, uh, a little harsh. Uh, but he's got some, some good advice uh, for those that are, you know, if you're, if you're like, super ambitious, uh, he might temper that ambition and sets, give you a reality check. But at the same time, um, yeah, well, I'll let him speak, and then I'll, I'll say what I want. Every year, we get a lot of requests to do software changes. Some of and we end up turning the vast majority of them down. Oh, but every once in a while, some, I have to fix that. The truth is, I have run into too many people who at some point decided they wanted to make games, and they picked up an engine, and they started diving in, and they quit before they ever finished their first game because the experience was just frustrating. It seemed like it was going nowhere. And I don't know if we can help, but this team has quite a lot of collective game-making experience, so hopefully some of our advice here will help you avoid the common pitfalls. The first thing you're going to want to be careful about is scope. Many, many people pick up a game engine dreaming of making the types of games they play. Unfortunately, this often just is not possible. Games like God of War or Final Fantasy are made by teams of at least 40 people, sometimes way more than 40 people, over the course of several years. Even if you're just amazing and you throw your whole life into creating your game, you're not going to make a God of War or a Final Fantasy. Not even close, and especially not on your first attempt. Truth is, you're not even going to create something like Super Mario Brothers as your first game. You may create, like... Okay, but you could create Super Mario Brothers as your second or third game. One level worth of Super Mario Brothers, but even that's kind of pushing it. Your goal with your first game should be to get something built that you can actually play, even in the most rudimentary fashion, as soon as possible. Think of your first game as a learning exercise, not your masterwork. If you start with a huge project, you'll find that you don't even know where to begin, and you'll get bogged down doing little bits and pieces that have no tangible result, and it'll seem like you're not making any progress at all, and you'll hit roadblocks that you don't know how to overcome, simply to be left flailing for what to even work on next. Trust me, keep it 
simple. If your first attempt at making a game turns out to be a one-room platformer with bad collisions that you took three weeks to build, be proud of that because you built it. You actually got it done. You made a game. That's more than most people ever manage. So play it and show it to your friends. And don't worry when they don't understand it or are critical because they're still thinking in terms of the big budget games they're used to playing. You know how much work went into making that game. And more importantly, you know that next time you'll be able to do it even better and faster. Soon, you'll be building games that people are asking you to let them play. Second thing to keep in mind, and I know this is going to sound weird, but don't go into your first game with a specific idea. Learn what you can do and design around that. Don't lock yourself into an idea and beat your head against it for weeks or months. Instead, learn a few tricks, watch a few tutorials, then start working towards something you're pretty sure you can build. It's okay if there are still a few parts of it you have no idea how to even start to do, but make sure it's only a few parts when you're breaking your project down and planning things out. Which, of course, brings us to tutorials. Any major engine has tons of people who happily make tutorials about pretty much everything. Go find them, watch them, study them. Then, if you're stuck or if you can't find an answer to your question, just ask. You'd be shocked at how many people are happy to help you through things if you just post on a forum or throw your thoughts onto the message boards. And don't be afraid of coding. Lots of people say they can't code, but if you design your game right, you would be shocked at how little coding you actually have to do to get something done. It's a small enough amount that any of you out there watching this right now can't handle it. Again, just start small, keep it simple. You'll learn as you go, and here especially there are plenty of sites out there that'll help get you started. Stack Exchange is a fantastic place to look if you have questions. Which leads us nicely into one of the big ones. Design your game around your skills. Part of understanding your scope is understanding your resources, and in this case, you are your resources. Are you a great artist, but you've never coded in your life? In that case, have your game lean on your art skills while pushing you just enough on the code side that you learn some new things. Are you somebody who can't draw or model or animate? That's alright. There are plenty of games out there that get away with what you'd call minimal graphics. Accept that and embrace it as part of your design. Constraints force us to be creative. And if there's something you really just have to have, if there's some coding task or some piece of art that your game just can't live without but you just don't have the chops to do it yourself, go to the asset store. There is an amazing amount of stuff that you can get there for next to nothing. James just talked to a professional studio that picked up their entire voice chat code from the asset store for less than it would have cost them all to go to the movies. James really wishes he had this sort of thing when he started out working in games. So take advantage of it. Finally, don't give up. There is a lot of life that's going to get in the way. Most people start out doing this between juggling a job or a full school schedule, and it's very, very easy to let days and then weeks pass before you get back to working on your game. It's going to be a struggle at first, no question. I wish I had more comforting words for you, but all I can say is that most things worth doing are a struggle. And if you stick with it, maybe one day you'll have the option to make games instead of having to do all that other stuff. But that's it for the basics. I know that was all broad, basic stuff. Okay, so he's got some good points. Uh, he can be a little uh, dour at times, like, uh, but but I think it's it's really important to focus on the things that you enjoy uh, best, and rather than going in with the mindset of I'm going to create the next God of War or Final Fantasy, um, like that that is. While it may be possible for a select few, um, I don't think you'd be watching me if it were true for you. It's definitely not true for me. Um, but you can still make some really cool games. Um, it, you just have to decide on where you want your strengths to be. Do you want your strengths to be in graphics? Then um, you can design some really, really cool graphics. Uh, or do you want it to be in, you know, how the, the game interacts? Uh, maybe you want a balance of all of those things, and that's okay too, but it, it takes a while to develop the skills. So starting, as what, he, what he's really focusing on, these, are, these tips are on how to start your game development, not how to, you know, uh, Gabe, you said he uh, built a cool game and, and he's only 15. Well, yeah, but I bet his first game wasn't the coolest game ever. Um, so that was his first game? All right, well, maybe he's just that cool then. Um, but uh, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but, you know, so, like, 
the, the important thing is to, to do something that you really enjoy and love and then figure out the, the bare minimum of the other stuff. For me, I hate graphics. I could care less. Uh, I, I just need you know, to see enough pixels to know exactly what is going on and know more. So I don't spend any time messing with that. Um, so either I'm going to download uh, graphics from other people who already made them, or I'm going to figure out what is the fastest way I can, I can program. You know, my person will be uh, not even a stick figure, but it will be, you know, maybe some, some flat image or maybe even simpler might be a line. Um, or a box that I, you move around with, with buttons. Like, that's how simple, uh, when I design a game, that's, that's what I do, because I want to focus on other things. So you have to decide what you want to focus on. Um, and that's where I want to end it. Um, uh, and uh, next time, we'll uh, go get uh, dive a little deeper into Unity. Um, and really get a better idea of what um, some of these uh, components do and how to add components and that sort of thing. Um, Gabe, I have not played Imperial Glory on Steam. Um, but with that, uh, I'm going to sign off, and uh, graphics are terrible. All right, I approve. Um, yeah, games can be awesome, but you can usually tell how good a game is by or how much someone cared by how, like, if it plays well or if it looks cool. Like, I can appreciate games with awesome graphics. Um, I just don't want to program that. Uh, but you can usually tell what someone's strength is and what they really poured their energy into. And uh, it really shows off uh, in the game. And if you actually wanted a job, uh, that's another point, too, I should make. If you want a job in, in game design, you probably will end up focusing, even though you could change around throughout, you know, over the years of working at, at a job, you'll probably end up focusing on specific things. Like, you might focus on game mechanics, or you might focus on game graphics, um, or you might focus on the, maybe the physics engine, or uh, the design, the layout, the level design, that sort of thing. But you, you probably aren't going to focus on more than one or a few of those things. So, um, and that's, that's why these teams of people can design, uh, you know, these incredibly complex games um, so quickly because uh, they're all playing to their strengths. And uh, that actually extends throughout life. Um, and with that, I'll, uh, I'm going to sign off. And I uh, hope you have a great evening. And I'll see you on Monday.